place kicker for the Detroit Lions. He holds the NFL record for the longest field goal ever, which means he's really good at kicking footballs. And this is a robot I made, which, not to brag, is also really good at kicking footballs. So to settle who's better between the two of us, we're going straight to Detroit, mano a mano, man versus machine. But to do that, I'm gonna need an eight second travel montage. I arrived an hour before him to get the full NFL experience. And so I could soak up the fact that I had an entire stadium just to myself in the most professional way possible. We just got word Matt is about 10 minutes out. He thinks he's coming here just to teach me all about like the kicking mechanics and the science behind kicking field goals, which is partially true, I am curious. But the real reason I'm here is I built a machine that can kick really far field goals. I think it can kick it farther than any human. But if I'm really gonna test that hypothesis, I need to be kicking against the one human that can kick field goals the farthest, and that happens to be Matt Prater. Originally, a guy named Tom Dempsey, who had a unique kicking foot, held the record with a 63-yard field goal, and no one could beat that for 43 years. But then Prater came along and beat his record by one yard with a 64-yard field goal in 2013. Good! History is made! And he still holds the record nearly a decade later. There he is. And not only did Matt show up, but to my absolute delight, he brought along his personal trainer. Who's this? This is Pax. What up, Pax? How are you, buddy? And so after I joined him for his standard warm-up and stretch routine, I went straight for the jugular. So do you practice just as much as everyone else on the team? I definitely don't practice as much as <laughs> everyone on your team is watching this like, oh, you punk. But he wants to be the kicker until it's the end of a game and you need a field goal. Then I asked him how to kick really long field goals, and he said it all comes down to just two things. Leg speed. Leg speed. First. And leg speed makes intuitive sense, but then he told me the second critical factor is making contact 2.2 inches up from the bottom of the ball. Extensive research has been done that backs up these two factors as the most critical for maximizing distance. So after that, he showed me the proper technique to achieve those two factors. So you come in an angle, so your plant leg should be as close to straight as you can and okay. at this angle, so your kicking leg can be straight. So right when you're making contact uh -huh. with the ball, your kicking leg should be locking right at I contact. See. And where do you hit the ball? So you'll hit the ball, you know, the little bone right in the middle of your foot. There. Yeah, like right here? Yeah, okay. right, right there. This will be the first time in my life I've legitimately attempted to kick a field goal. But after Matt's coaching, he made it seem like it was pretty similar to playing soccer. And I like to play soccer. You shouldn't have done this, but you taught me everything you know. So I say we have a competition, me versus you. I thought of a wager we could have. That Gatorade thing, it's got ice water in it. The loser gets dunked. All right. I'll you okay out. with that? Yeah, yeah that You seem pretty confident. I don't know, we'll see, <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Look at this guy sandbagging. So with that, we were ready to go, and this was his first kick, which he lined up left-footed, which didn't go well for me, because oh, yeah. he's not left-footed. <laughs> this is a disaster. <laughs> and then it was my turn. All right, Rober. Nope. Laces out, Dan. Gotta remember everything you taught me. Yep. I like that. <sighs> Got it. Nailed nice. it. Moving back five. Right. This is a 25 yarder. They might say, Mark, what do you mean 25? You're only on the 15 yard line. And that's true, but the end zone itself is 10 yards, so you always include that with the kick distance. Got it. Good shot. All right, Prater, let's All see right. what you got, pal. Ignore this. Don't it's let this right. bother you. We can, we can have a full conversation. What'd you have for breakfast? Oh, goodness, that was right in the middle. Oh, that was a bad kick, but I'll take it. Got it. Got it! Okay. Bomb. Crushed it. Ooh. Oh, wow. So far, I don't know, our kicks look pretty similar. Come back. Crushed good? it. Got Is it. That good? Easy. <laughs> With room to spare. No pressure. Oh, no. That almost went over the net, man. <laughs> Now that we were back to a 45-yard field goal, I was just stoked to still be in this. 
Oh, is that it? Is that short? What? Official review. I want an official review. Well, there's something I haven't told you. I'm actually a barefoot kicker. You never saw this coming, did you? No. <laughs> it's honestly the last thing I expected you to do. In my defense, this was a super popular kicking style in the early 80s. But with no proven advantage, no one really does it anymore. Except for me. Get in. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> no! Oh, not cool. That's the worst sound you can hear as a kicker too. Hitting the pole, yeah, her crossbar. Oh, that was heart-wrenching. At least the high speed looked kind of cool. And so here's Prater for the win. <laughs> and just the perfect form. All right, Matt, I thought my the barefoot was gonna be my trump card, but I'll concede. As it stands, I'm getting the Gatorade bath. But while I might not be good at kicking footballs, I am good at engineering, which technically means I'm really good at kicking footballs. Let's go, baby! <laughs> what is this? Okay, and stop. This, now you come around back. Greatest kicker of our generation. Oh, no way. <laughs> You're looking for Ray Finkel. Oh my gosh. And a clean pair of shorts. So now Prater knew the real reason I was here, but to truly understand what he's up against, we have to go back just about one year, because that's when, with the help of my buddy John here, we tested our first prototype. John's really good with this kind of rugged, high-strength build, because he's worked in the industry doing props and special effects. And so at the end of that first day of testing, we could make a 60-yard field goal, but honestly, it was kind of just barely. We needed more power and accuracy, because it was really inconsistent. But to understand how we fixed it, first you need to know how it works. Fundamentally, we've got a hub attached to an axle here. It can freely rotate. And if you slap a kicking leg on the end, they both rotate together. Then if you put a winch on this side connected to a wire that secures to the hub here, and then springs on this side also attached to a wire that attach to the hub in the same spot, then when the winch pulls down, the springs stretch out as the leg is cocked back into position. Now we just need a way to fire the thing. A quick release is a hook system that easily unhooks when you pull a cord. So if we put one of those here and then pull the cord, the springs now contract, which makes the leg spin real fast. For version two of the robot, everything had to get much more rugged and complex packed because we doubled the force from the springs to over a ton. And when we went out to test this time, it definitely did have more power and our 60 yarders were looking much more promising. But because the football was making contact off to the side of the leg, it still wasn't as accurate as we wanted. <laughs> So for version three, we changed how the foot attached, which allowed us to hit the ball straight on. We also tried to determine the best foot diameter, as well as the best spot to make contact with the ball. But I still wanted even more power, which was tricky because there was already so much force that we busted our industrial strength quick release, which is why there's a loose bolt in the frame here, which is just never something you wanna see. And so for the fourth and final version, we upgraded to a much beefier quick release and then increased our spring force to two tons. We also got clever with some mechanical advantage by making the diameter of the leg sprocket twice as small as the driving sprocket. So it rotated twice as far, but in the same amount of time, which means we doubled the speed. With a big build like this, you are only as strong as your weakest link. So this process of prototyping, failing, and fixing helps flush out all the weak links as quickly as possible until hopefully there's none left. And so a year after we first started, this fourth version finally had the kind of power and accuracy I was hoping for. Even if we were definitely pushing the physical limits in a few critical spots. For now though, it was time to give Mr. Prater a proper introduction. So Ray Finkel is my surrogate. This is what I couldn't do even with my bare foot. We'll see if old Ray here can do better. Now I'm not abandoning everything you taught me here. Uh-huh. Okay. Two steps over. Okay, here we go. Are you ready? Three, two, one. Get up! That's my boy! That's my boy! Wow, that looked really easy. That yeah. looked really yeah, easy, that yeah. That looked really easy. I hate to tell you, Matt, but that wasn't full power. <laughs> In fact, that was only one third power. For a half power demonstration, we went to the extra point location, where for reference, here is Prater, the mere human, kicking full power into the net, and then Finkel at half power, <laughs> kicking it into the stands. <laughs> And at this point, we'd poke the sleeping giant because first of all, Matt suspiciously yeah. asked me to hold his next kick. 
Bobby. And secondly, after that 50-yarder, he continued working his way down the field, despite my best efforts to even further rig the competition. <laughs> oh my gosh. And this guy! <laughs> You have, you have real bad golf etiquette. I had this great idea to arrange with my buddy Paul Nerkala to get some drone racing footage of a field goal because he's the drone racing world champion and that would just be so dope. This footage here is from a test session we arranged to see how cool it would look and it turns out the answer is really freaking cool. But after we got everything set up, a staff member requested we didn't fly a drone inside so you're just gonna have to use your imagination as Prater bombs this 60 yarder. which meant the next kick attempt would be farther than his NFL record. And one of the things Matt does so well is that technically NFL record, you want to- Which this man holds. Oh, I hit off my toe. Get up. It's oh, good! Is it in? Get, I'll take it. We have to go back a little further. You're crazy, dude. I'm putting on my rally cap for you, buddy. As much as I don't want to get doused with Gatorade, and while Matt's taking a few attempts at this 70 yard field goal, let me just say that it's really special being in the presence of an elite athlete such as himself. Don't rule out barefoot here. You know what <laughs> <Right>? I mean? <laughs> oh my goodness. No, wait, short. Uh. These were honestly the first shots he'd missed all day from anywhere on the field. No. Oh. Oh. No, I'm Dude, well done. So now that Prater was unsuccessful from 70 yards, Finkel rolled over to potentially win the competition and save me from an ice bath. All right, here we go. A little bit of train horn for good luck and good measure. And this is where Matt got a little taste of Finkel's true range of motion. Whoa. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this was about 80% full power flow. That's all you gotta oh. do, dude. That's all you gotta do. Okay. Three, two, one, hit it. Go, baby, go! And so even with a terribly <laughs> inefficient launch trajectory, we'd settled the question of man versus machine. Oh, that's my boy! That's my boy! Finkel! The hang time, Dude, though, right? so high. <laughs> I didn't think it was going to get there. It was like straight I up. know. But since Finkel had made the trip all the way out here, we decided to keep going and try his foot next at an 84-yard field goal, which is an even 20 yards past the NFL record. But first, we wanted to try and figure out the foot speed of Finkel versus Prater. So we recorded a few kicks in slow-mo with a checkerboard background behind it. This is a trick I learned while at NASA that they've used for ages, because if you know the size of each of those squares, it allows you to watch back the clip and tell the speed of any moving object in the footage by converting grid boxes per second to miles per hour. So when you do this, you find Matt's foot is moving at an insane 48 miles per hour, which puts him right up with the elite place kickers and soccer players. The robot's foot, however, is traveling more than 30 miles an hour faster at a blazing 82 miles per hour. We also measured the ball speed after contact, and while Prater is at 80 miles per hour, which is again, insanely fast, the robot clocks in at 120 miles per hour. And that checkered background speed trick is so cool that I invented this. I call it the 40 mile an hour blanket because it's a real soft functional blanket on one side, but the other side has these squares that are sized just right so that if you film in slow-mo on your phone, the math works out perfectly so that you just count how many squares it travels in exactly one slow-mo second and that's how fast it's moving in miles per hour. So for example, if I film this Nerf dart in slow-mo, then I play it back and just count the squares it crosses in one second, in this case it's 28 squares, then we know it was traveling 28 miles per hour. And just to prove this approach works, we used a radar gun to check our answer and it came up with the exact same speed. And so it turns out, I throw a Nerf football at 15 miles per hour and I can do a short sprint at 12 miles per hour. There are 40 total squares, which means you can measure anything up to 40 miles per hour with one blanket. But if you get two blankets, then you can unlock the achievement to measure things up to 80 miles per hour. And if you get 16.7 million of them, you can measure the speed of light. And it's not just a speedometer, Oh, <laughs> and a cozy blanket you can put on your bed, but the back is solid blue, which works great as a green screen for filming or for video call background replacement. And a very limited quantity are available on my relatively new website, markrober.com, where every single dollar of anything I sell goes right back into making builds and videos like this one. And even if you're like, 
I got plenty of blankets, Mark. I put all the critical square spacing info on the website so you can construct your own grid and still have fun with the science. And so now that we knew Finkel could blast these balls at 120 miles per hour, here was his first attempt from 83 yards, although still not quite at full power, and I'll explain why in a second. Okay, a little bit of horn. Now we're ready. Three, two, one. And when you see this, these balls were no deflate gate Brady specials. These were the most inflated footballs I'd ever handled. You could barely dent them in with your hand. It's just the pressure from the robot foot was that high. <laughs> the first kick had the worst possible trajectory, and so the hang time was hilarious. We had quite a bit of energy up in the air. I think we need to optimize this a bit. But straight is a gosh darn arrow. So for the next one, we arranged the foot to contact higher up on the ball so it wouldn't pop it up so much. But Three, still not two, a full power kick. One. Go! Please! Oh. <laughs> but this one was just short because it knuckleballed and didn't pop up high enough. So now we knew exactly where to strike the ball to split the difference between those two. And we figured we might as well leave it all on the table and go full throttle. Which makes now a great time to explain why we weren't just doing this on every kick. On our last trip to the practice field, we were totally dialed in, as you can see here. I mean, that thing is suborbital. As a reminder, this is a 60-yard attempt. This is only four yards shy of the NFL record. And as you can see, we've got a little room to spare as we pass through the uprights. So then just for fun, we opened it up and sent all two tons of spring force through the machine and into the ball, which is when this happened. We're just going absolutely full, all of the power. One! Oh my gosh! Yes! If you watch that clip back, the ball landed here, but it had the height to clear the uprights right here. And you'll notice that's right above this unique pattern in the cement. And from the satellite view, that unique pattern is right here. Now we were kicking from the 50 yard line, so the question is, what is that distance? Well, if we borrow this convenient 100 yard measuring stick, then that kick would have gone through the uprights with no tee and a slight headwind from 105 yards away. Now this is a bit of a good news, bad news situation, because on one hand, the ability to max out the robot and kick 105 yard field goals is amazing. But on the other hand, on the very next kick, this happened. The leg just fell off. We might be done for today. <laughs> Basically, we sheared the key in the key shaft because of the whole two tons of spring force thing. And in case you're unfamiliar, this is the key. It's just a chunk of metal that gets wedged in here so that when the key shaft turns, the sprocket turns with it. So the final improvement would have been to swap the key shaft with a spline shaft because those distribute the load evenly among many surfaces as opposed to just one. Unfortunately, those spline shafts had a two week lead time and we were flying to Detroit a few days after this. Ray Finkel from 83 yards, full power plus a little more. Three, two, one. Oh! <laughs> oh! Oh! <laughs> Watch Finkel's head here. I'm sorry, buddy. Oh my gosh! And sure enough, it was the key that was the culprit. Keys aren't supposed to do this. Like, that's bonkers. And so despite the explosive finale, I'm calling this a W. Not only did Robot Ray Finkel beat the NFL record with a 70-yard kick at sea level with no wind, but he did it at 80% power and a super inefficient kick trajectory. On top of that, even though he lost a couple freaking legs in the process, he showed he's capable of bombing a 105-yard field goal into a slight headwind right off the turf with no tee. And so with all that, honestly, I was willing to let Prater off the hook because an argument could be made that I technically sort of cheated. But his son Pax was already way too excited about the prospect, which I thought was just fantastic.